Hello and welcome to our conversation with Highways England and Access Able. My name is Graham Footer. I'm the Chief Executive at Disabled Motor in UK and we're going to talk about accessibility and facilities at motorway service areas and the recently launched service now provided by Highways England for their hearing impaired customers who can now use British Sign Language when calling the customer contact centre. We'll be talking to our panel and asking them some of your questions and I'd like to start by telling you a little bit more about Disabled Motor in UK, which is a charity that represents disabled motorists. The charity is nearly 100 years old now, um, and it's a completely independent membership organisation. Its aims are to help disabled people to stay active and engaged in their communities and play a full part in our society. We help people to travel independently, however they want to achieve that, without having to rely on others. We know that this helps to prevent disabled people from becoming isolated, cut off and lonely. If you have a disability or you live with somebody who does, why not look us up and join Disabled Motor in UK and help support our work? I'm now going to ask our panel to introduce themselves, starting with Julie Prince from Highways England. Over to you, Julie. OK, thanks, Graham. Yeah, Highways England, we're, we're a government owned company that operates, maintains and improves England's motorways and major A roads. Our main priority is safety. We want everyone who uses or works on our roads to get home safe and well. And my role is to look and work with operators and developers of roadside facilities and wider industry to ensure that policy and legal requirements are met for the benefit of our mutual customers. Thanks, Julie. Um, now over to David Livermore from Access Able. David, can you tell us a little bit about your organisation, please? Hi, Graham. Um, so I'm David Livermore and I'm a director at Access Able, um, which is an organisation which was established just over 20 years ago. Um, and our main aim is to survey and publish factual, detailed accessibility information to all the types of places that people want to go to. And in fact, motorway service areas have been our, one of our most requested um, access guides um, in the last five years. So we're particularly excited about this project. That's great. Thanks for joining us, David. And uh, lastly, but by no means leastly, um, over to Julian Horsler, um, who is also from Highways England. Over to you, Jules. Hi there, Graham. Yeah, I am Jules Horsler. I'm the Quality, Diversity and Inclusion Manager here at um, Highways England. And my role is to try and ensure our roads and our services are as accessible and inclusive as we can for all of our for all of our diverse customers. That's brilliant. Thanks, Jules. So the first topic we're going to talk about today is changing places at motorway service areas. So let's start with you, Julie, if we may. Um, can you set the scene for us, please, as to how motorway service areas operate and exactly what do we mean by changing places? Yes, thanks, Graham. I can do that. Um, motorway service area operators are required to fully comply with the Equality Act 2010 legislation. The Act itself doesn't compel the operators to provide changing places facilities, and as well as being privately operated, for the most part, the sites are also privately owned. So where the site freehold remains in government hands, these are leased to the operators under leases that grant the control of the land to the operator. Highways England does not mandate, mandate the motorway service area operators to install um, the changing places toilets. So back in 2013, uh, we were proactive in approaching the changing places consortium to explain the situation and to offer guidance on the matter. So you asked me about changing places and what exactly do we mean by that? Well, they are designed so that they are completely accessible to provide sufficient space uh, and equipment for people who are not able to use the toilet independently. There must be an extra facility in addition to the accessible toilets um, available for independent use. Um, can you tell us how things have moved forward since 2013 with regards to the provision of changing places toilets, please? Yes, um, I'm pleased to be able to inform you that the Department of Com Communities, Housing and Local Governments are working closely with MENCAP and Changing Places Consortium who have initiated work with external partners to, ex um, to establish practical ways to get more of these facilities installed. So this has involved a number of organisations such as the British Council of Shopping Centres, um, Planning Officers Society, Network Rail, uh, the Association of Op Operating 
uh, train operating companies, as well, of course, uh, the Department for Transport, who we do work uh, very closely with uh, on this matter. So how is England? Um, we, we, we continue to look at ways in which that, that, you know, we can raise awareness of the changing places, toilets and communications with service area operators, planning, um, you know, local planning authorities, etc. And we'll continue um, to work with them um, as we go forward, along with the Changing Places Consortium. OK, that's great. So where are you now? That is a very good question, and I'm pleased to be able to inform you that the DFT um, promised to provide £2 million to fund installation of changing places facilities, a discussion that we were very involved with at Highways England, and we're pleased to be able to influence um, part of that decision. And so back in November 2018, uh, it was announced um, that this would be done in partnership with the Muscular Dystrophy um, UK. And then in April 2019, again, working with the department, um, we facilitated the opening of a three month window. Now, what that window did was allowed um, the operators to apply for 50 percent match funding based upon completion of the project. And we were thrilled um, that that approval then was given to install an additional 22 facilities uh, during uh, the 19 kind of 2019 20 window. Now, sadly, due to COVID-19, uh, some key industry and delivery partner, partner colleagues were, were furloughed. Um, understandably, this led to a delay, uh, but everybody now um, still committed and is busy getting things back on track as best we can. And we are hopeful that the installations will be complete um, you know, during 2021. Well, that's brilliant to hear. Thanks for that, Julie. Um, that's really encouraging news. Um, Turning now to David, if I may, um, David, as well as being uh, a partner of Disabled Motor in UK, you're also now working with Highways England, uh, undertaking the surveys of all 113 motorway service areas in England. Um, can you tell us a bit more about that then, please? Um, yeah, as I said, it's um, you know it's a really exciting program. Um, you know, despite the setbacks uh, through COVID-19, I think we're getting you know much closer to launching, which we expect you know, next year. Motorway services, as, as I said before, have been one of the most requested of all of our guides in the last five years. So we're really delighted to be able to start the program with Highways England and the MSA operators. So we've now currently surveyed 74 motorway service areas alongside the fueling stations, and we're expecting to launch in May next year. Now, the survey process and the guides that we created are incredibly detailed. They contain over a thousand pieces of information per motorway service areas and they cover all aspects of accessibility from physical layout to contrast colours, lighting levels and staff training. We've needed now to include a, a dedicated COVID-19 section within the guides and that's in order to highlight the adaptions that each individual MSA has taken um, and this will be adapted over time as some of those adaptions actually change. Um, the guides will be made available through our own website on www.accessable.co.uk, um, but could also be integrated into the High Highways England website, each of the individual MSA operators, and also has a potential to be integrated across wider stakeholders as well, such as DM UK, ZapMap, RAC, for instance. OK, um, so how will these guides then be kept up to date? Um, you know, as as you know, going, you know, it's absolutely critical that you know once you once you've got access access information and it's comprehensive, it's up to date, it's accurate. You've got to make sure that it's kept up to date. Um, so we've got a number of processes in place, um, starting with users themselves. So we've got a specific button on the app and on the website that enables users to identify changes themselves that we can then confirm and update within a 24-hour period for any non-structural changes. And we're also in regular and frequent contact with Highways England and the individual MSA operators in order to understand progress and any changes that are scheduled to take place. And then finally, we revisit in person each motorway service area every year through our surveying team in order to capture those physical structural changes as well. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, how have the, the surveys themselves gone? I mean, how did, how did your surveyors find you know, find it working across all these different uh, motorway service areas. It must have been a bit of a challenge, wasn't it? 
Well, uh, it's fair to say that in the last few months, we've seen a number of challenges uh, from COVID and all its logistical issues and, uh, and seeing all seasons in one day, particularly when you're outside surveying car parks. Um, I think one of the more notable statistics from the programme is that we all have spent more than 500 hours surveying the toilets across all motorway service areas. That's a lot of time to be spent in those types of places. Um, but it's also been interesting looking at new areas. I think I mentioned the, the COVID-19 adaption section, which, you know, at the start of this programme, we had had no sight of, of, of needing to include something like that. But also now referencing EV charging points um, with specific information relating to how they're operated, heights, sheltered cover areas, size of parking bays, proximity to the main building. Now, this is a really fast growing area and we're really pleased to be able to adapt our programme accordingly. Oh, that, that sounds fantastic, David. Um, could I just ask Julie to say a little bit more about EV charging, please? Yeah, of course. Just picking up on that last point, uh, it is absolutely a fast growing area. Um, and at Highways England, currently we're developing our carbon plan uh, to set the direction to achieve net zero carbon by 2050. And this will cover how we influence all users to reduce their carbon emissions. And this will be published in 2021. Uh, the Department for Transport are developing uh, the National Transport Decarboniz uh, Decarbonisation Plan, uh, which we expect to set a clear direction on how infrastructure provision will ensure uh, that users' needs uh, are met. And then the OLAV, um, which is the Office for Low uh, Emission Vehicles, they're leading on the Department for Transport strategy for EV charge points. And again, um, Highways England will be working closely with them to ensure that we can play our part as the plans evolve. OK, that, that's great. One final question, Julie. Um, who's actually responsible for the maintenance of these charge points at roadside facilities then? Yeah, the responsibility rests with the operators themselves. Um, they will all have their own contract uh, maintenance arrangements in place um, with, with, with the provider. OK, that's great. Um, Julie, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, I think just, just maybe um, one thing, if, if, if I may, is, is to thank um, the members of the public who have, have written in today um, with, with all of the questions. I have read them all. Uh, some of them, uh, unfortunately, have fallen outside of the scope of this, this discussion um, and, and are for the uh, motorway service area operators to address. But I will certainly take them all away um, and arrange for a, a, re a reply to be sent. Oh, that's great. Thanks for doing that, uh, Julie. That's smashing. Um, I'd, now, I'd now like to turn to Julian, if I may, uh, from Highways England. Julian, um, uh, what about the offering of hearing impaired callers use of British Sign Language? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so, so Highways England um, offers support to, to all of our road users 24 hours a day, every day of the year through through our customer con attack center um which which um, offers journey planning advice information about road works traffic etc and 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 also helps have helps people if they're broken down um sign live is the the new service we 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 have added to the con attack center which is there to help deaf people communicate with our advisors using British Sign Language. Um, so the the service is free for deaf people to use and 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 it enables the deaf customer to uh, uh, connect with an, an online professional British Sign Language interpreter who will then t telephone Highways England for them and I'd kind of relay the conversation uh, between our advisor and the deaf customer. Um, if you want to use the Sinai service, you um, need to have a device with a webcam and also with audio, and you can download a a a Sign Live app off either um, either the App Store for iOS devices or on Google Play if you've got an Android um, and it works on all smartphones tablets uh, and and you can also use it on your um, home laptop as well 
Well, that sounds uh, it really interesting. Um, Jules, uh, I also understand that Highways England has introduced an SMS service for those customers who, due to their disability, are unable to use the roadside emergency telephones. Can you tell us a bit about that, please? Yeah, sure. Um, yes, again, so uh, for for m- many hearing impaired and also speech impaired customers, y- using emergency telephones isn't an, an option. Um, however, now if, if if they break down, they're able to send us a text to report their situation and to ask for um, and to ask for assistance. Um, if I can give you the uh, text number, it's um, 07380 283600. Um, details for using that uh, tech service um, are also also able to be found on all of the emergency roadside telephones um, across our network. Um, However, I should just add, um, if a customer um, needs um, um, emergency assistance, for example, if they have stopped in in a live lane of moving cars, then they should contact 999 immediately. Yeah, good advice. Thanks, Jules. what else is happening then in regards to equality and customer service in respect to disabled road users? Anything else happening? Yeah, I I, I also like to think quite a lot, actually. Um, we have made a lot of efforts to uh, try and embed equality and diversity um, into all areas of our work, working closely with our key stake, stakeholders um, because we want to better understand our customers' needs and kind of how we can find the best solutions for them. So we lead the Roads for All Forum, for example, which uh, uh, meets regularly, and we uh, talk about how we can make our roads and services more accessible and more inclusive to our disabled customers. The uh, forum involves many disability organisations who 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 play a really crucial role helping us to understand and to address the the barriers that disabled people um, who 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 travel by road may experience. Um, so we're doing a range of things. For example, we're also training our traffic officers to be more aware of the uh, diverse needs of our customers and kind of hence more able to help them to uh, stay safe if they break down. Um, we're also looking to increase awareness of the Sunflower L- L- Lanyard Scheme, which is a great scheme for people who have got specific needs. Um, however, they they are p- people who have a hidden disability. So without the Sunflower L- Lanyard, it, it might not be so obvious. Um, so as, a, as I say, I think there's lots going on. Uh, but we've got lots more to be to, to doing yet, Graham. Yeah, that, that's really encouraging to hear, Jules. And of course, Disabled Motoring UK will certainly do its bit to play its part in all of that. So thank you for all that you're doing mm. for us. Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today, folks. Um, before we close, though, I would like to thank all of our panel members. Um, I do hope that you've uh, found the discussion informative. And I'd like to add that the following websites displayed on your screens now are where you can find further information about Highways England, Disabled Motoring UK, and of course, Access Able. The customer service contact number is 0300 123 5000. I'll say that again, 0300 123 5000. Thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.